right, we're gonna talk about Collider Infinity Wars again, mother of Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? It's uh, <laughs> episode 229. It's Wednesday. That's right. I'm John Schnepp. You're watching Collider Heroes. We're going to get sweaty with a brand new group of people, as well as Robert Meyer Burnett. What's going on, man? It's good to be back. You know, uh, did you go to the uh, LA Vintage Paperback Show this year? You weekend? know, not this year. I, I went last year. I know they have it every like six months or something. What'd you get? You know, not much, but I did buy a famous films magazine, and on the cover from July of 1979, on the cover, the headline was, Why Superheroes Don't Work. Not to correct you, you meant fantastic films. I did say, did I say You said famous else? films. I said, fan yes, famous, not famous monsters, but fantastic right. films. Why superhero films don't work. So in the 70s, they did not foresee the, the, right. the joyous existence. This Superman thing they is just behind. a one-off. Danny Fernandez, what's I going on? I am here. Um, I just want to say I don't know how sweaty I can get. I have a thyroid problem, so I just... <laughs> Get ready for the thyroid to just be like going overboard, you know? I'm freezing cold in here, y'all don't know. Yeah. But um, I'm good. I'm repping one of my heroes. He is a hero in my heart, which is Vegeta. So, yeah. Right on. Eric Ishii, what's going on? Hello. Glad to be back. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. I get, uh, I don't sweat much, actually. I, I think it's a hereditary thing. You get clammy? Yeah, I get, I, you know... I, I get I get clammy though. Well, I got the full brow sweat, especially when we're talking about <laughs> Avengers: Infinity War. That's right. We're talking about that trailer once again. But certain things have happened from Monday to Wednesday, as well as like reveals that the Russo brothers have said it breaking box office. Uh, you know, on Fandango, mm -hmm. they won't reveal the number. I guess it's like Netflix. Well, we a lot of people saw it. We don't. We can't reveal how many people saw it. But what are your thoughts about Avengers: Infinity War? Will it beat Black Panther? Which right now is the number one superhero film of all time. And if it hasn't broken it today, it'll probably break it later today. I mean, and it's right on the edge of beating uh -huh. Avengers as being the biggest box office for any superhero film ever. What are your thoughts about that? I absolutely think that it will break the records. And actually because of Black Panther, because mm -hmm. they did such a good job of just building all of the the excitement and the tension and the stories and like you, these are characters that we love we've been loving for almost a decade for a decade now yeah. and uh and and you know to just really kind of go like tee it up tee it up with black panther uh it was so smart of them because now people want to go and they want to see more of wakanda they want to see more of black panther so i think that it will beat black panther but because of black panther yeah. yeah i also agree i feel like with black panther as well there was this whole demographic of people that i saw a lot of people that were like i'm not really into superhero films but i now feel seen and represented and now they're invested in this character where they want to continue to see them that is another part of the demographic that they're also trying to get as well as comic book fans as well. I do think that it's going to beat it. I think that it's almost, it might come in second to Force Awakens actually overall, because mm. Force Awakens was 250 million and then The Last Jedi was 215. So I definitely think it's gonna hit and be probably in the second there. Right, and Star Wars has the 40 year and you know, this is 10 of years. Course. So they got a little, of course. Got a little time on it. What do you think, stories. Robert? Well, you know, I think it, the success of this movie was underestimated on a number of levels. I think not only is there such great representation in it, but the world building. Like everything in this movie is just cool to watch. Like you sit in the theater and the Dormelage's outfits, the outfits are cool. Like when they're on screen kicking ass, you're like, this is fun. Like you, there's all these little pockets of fun in that movie that collectively build up to a satisfying movie going experience. And unlike the, the idea of the movie star these days is sort of dead. No, no movie stars can open films mm -hmm. anymore. But the casting of Marvel films is something that has been woefully underestimated. And if you look at the cast of Black Panther, perfection. I mean, they went and they just thought, who is the A-team of people that can, they can be Wakandan? They picked the best actors they could have for these roles. There's not one misstep. I mean, Michael B. Jordan, I loved him in Creed. I mean, I've talked right. about how much I love Creed on this movie and uh, on the show and how that movie should never have worked. I mean, the seventh Rocky movie, the sixth sequel to Rocky, really? Right. And it worked like gangbusters. And I, I, you can't take your eyes off that kid. That guy is one heck of an actor teaming up with Ryan Coogler again. 
everything about the film is just aces. Well, I think and they did a good job with, uh, with having a villain that you could empathize with. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, that has been a complaint with a lot of Marvel villains that they're like one dimensional and it's really about the hero and no villain has really had any depth to him. But like with Killmonger, this is one of those characters where you actually are kind of on his side until he starts murdering people. And you're like, hey, <laughs> right. easy. And I feel like uh, that was a good flip that they did with Black Panther because Black Panther himself hadn't really fully become a leader. And he was sort of forced to become a leader by seeing the opposite of what he should be. So I feel like the yin and yang of the hero and the villain were really kind of a, one of the better uh, written and fully realized of all the Marvel films. I feel like with Avengers Infinity War, the Russo brothers have stated they need to make Thanos like 10 times better than Darth Vader and to give him a full backstory. And I feel like in this trailer, we saw Gamora's little baby hand, a little, little oh, green man. hand. You're just like Captain America holding onto that one pinky. It's like, you know, <laughs> Thanos is this giant creature, but I feel like we're gonna get into his backstory a little bit and, and kind of, if you don't understand why someone wants to kill half of the known universe, you have to understand, we have to be, understand where the villain is coming from. And you also have to kind of like get it, like where you'd be like, well, that kind of makes sense. You have to sort of see where they're coming from for them to be a worthy villain. What are your thoughts about that? Oh man, with Killmonger, I, I saw more on my Twitter feed about like, he might have a point uh, mm -hmm. than anything else, really. And I, I agree. I, I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of Loki, and I'm a huge fan of, uh, yeah, yeah, Killmonger and uh, Hela. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, Marvel has had a problem with villains because the heroes are so iconic and so relatable. Um, they have had trouble crafting a rogues gallery to really rival them. Um, but also, I wanted to to touch on, um, they're talking about the casting for, for everything, and really, honestly, I think they were so smart to not focus on casting celebrities. Mm -hmm. um, they cast very good actors, but I think from the beginning, they said that they wanted the characters to be the box office draw, because um, statistically, uh, celebrities do not put butts in seats anymore. Right. Um, but these characters do now. Like People want to see Captain America and Tony Stark and uh, Black Panther and, and uh, just everybody that they've known and loved. Yeah, and I and so it, it'll be interesting to see how they can set up Thanos as like the huge big bad to rival everything that they've been building up so far. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned a few things like, I mean, I don't know if Hell is gonna show up as the death part of Thanos' equation, but you know, Chris Evans was not a giant uh, mm -mm. superstar. I mean, he played other superhero characters, Human Torch, he was in The Losers, a bunch. he was in that Push movie. But, you know, this is like now when you think of Chris Evans, you think of him as Steve Rogers as Captain America, Chadwick Boseman as Same Black Scarlett Panther. Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson. probably the biggest person that yes. they cast, and still yeah. we think of her Samuel as Samuel L. Jackson Widow. was probably the biggest, and Robert Downey yeah. Jr. to yeah. a lesser degree, but the best and most well known. And when he said the Avenger Initiative, you know, that's when <laughs> people were like, what's this Avenger Initiative they're speaking of? You know, it's like, so what do you think? Well, I think I, I think Chadwick Boseman was a perfect person to play Black, Black Panther, and it bothered me that people were like, well, he had the spotlight stolen from him. There wasn't enough Black Panther in the Black Panther movie, which I don't agree with. I think that they that Coogler specifically made the juxtaposition juxta juxtaposition of having someone who is not boisterous, who is more of this um, classic, well-refined, he's royalty for mm -hmm. one, and then in the opposite, you have Killmonger. You have that's literally a villain's job is to steal the spotlight. He literally yep. <laughs> tried to steal the throne. He literally stole the throne. And that's why when you see that um, that reverse image of him where it's upside down, it's like this topsy turvy world of what it would look like if Killmonger was Black Panther. Mm. So that was something that I didn't necessarily agree with. That kind of bothered me. There's you can't have two. Killmongers. You can't have two people that are both loud right. and boisterous. Um, but as far as villains being justified, that's how I have always uh, felt about Poison Ivy. Because when you look at her, I'm like, she makes a good point. We are ruining the planet and she wants to kill people in order to save the planet, which I'm okay with because sometimes we're awful. So... She's a- uh, Her and Swamp Thing should team up. Yes, they both have like, the, for the green. But when you think about it, you're like, is it really that? No, she's just, she's, you know, global warming, climate change. She's all, she's all about it. Absolutely. Well, another thing that, you know, we talk about the planning of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The fact is Black Panther was introducing us to a world. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't about one guy. It wasn't like you know, John McClane in a building, you know, in Nakatomi Center. It was about the world of Wakanda and right. all of these people that surrounded Black Panther. And then the central focus was was on Killmonger coming and, and usurping the throne of Wakanda. But how great is it? And how great is it? How great is the planning of Kevin Feige in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that Wakanda plays such a huge role leading into the the best advertising for Infinity War is Black Panther. Yeah. And they knew that. And and the fact that they've incorporated Wakanda and everything that was going on, they knew what they had. And it it goes to the planning of of why this universe, this is what I don't understand. When we talk on this show, we're not shills for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but I admire the business that Marvel Studios is doing and the thought and the foresight that is being put into their films. And I think n- nowhere is that more evidence than, than the success of Black Panther leading into Infinity War. Black Panther's still gonna be in the theaters. Right, well, I mean, that's, it's gonna War be a great double feature in about four and a half weeks. But <laughs> to your point, I think Civil War was like, not only was it like Avengers 2.5 or whatever you wanna call it, it was still Cap's movie, but it introduced the Black Panther and T'Challa and to a lesser degree Wakanda, but the whole idea of Wakanda was introduced at the end. So you sort of like, you have this little preview and then you're like, oh, I, I've heard this about, the, for people who didn't read the comics and don't know about it, they're like, oh, this Black Panther character was a really cool uh, force of nature, so to speak, cutting through the, the other storyline of the, of the Avengers splitting apart into two teams. He had his own thing, it was vengeance. And then, as like you said, with royalty, he realizes like murdering him will do nothing. That's when, as he slowly became the king, he, that's him taking on that mantle and the, and the responsibility. So we see that further in Black Panther, and then the sequel to Black Panther, the unofficial Black Panther 2.5, whatever you want to call Avengers Infinity War, which is everybody's unofficial sequel. I mean, you see that it all, all Wakanda plays a really big role in it. So that's, I think, once again, a, a pretty smart way to play with the, all these different movies. You make all of them watchable as individual films, and you could also watch them all as one big giant thing. Well, and so you're, oh, go ahead. Yeah, oh, oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I think that the pacing <clears throat> of how everything has been set up throughout this whole buildup was really smart. Like we mentioned, you mentioned that Wakanda was one of the characters introduced in this last film, and that's going to be pivotal for uh, this this newest installation. Um, and every single character, we haven't felt overwhelmed. We're, we're suddenly right. like, whoa, who is everybody? Uh, we, we have gotten little teases of characters uh, throughout other people's stories. Mm-hmm. So like Black Widow in Iron Man and uh, in, in, uh, in a Black Panther in uh, Civil War and uh, just just little little things where everybody had their moment to sort of shine and be introduced and then explained. Well, to your point you uh, about the villains, and, and a lot of people have talked about how the Marvel villains aren't strong enough. Well, traditionally, the villains have had to be defeated in one movie. If you really look at it, the, the greatest villains in the Marvel Universe are the Avengers themselves. The split right. that occurred, you know, because of the Sokovia Accords, and then which carried through to Civil War, that's going to be part of Infinity War. <clears throat> You've got these characters because of their differing ideologies, and they can't get it together. That's the danger, you know, right. and they have to get together and 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 solve these problems. I would assume, otherwise, the world Thanos is going to snap his fingers, and half of humanity, as we've seen in the trailers, is going to be eliminated. And and that's been really really interesting. Like, I wouldn't have killed Killmonger. Like. Why can't? Why did he have to die? I think or it did was he really die? Bold move that they did it, though. Yeah. I know, but uh, I mean, and that's what, yeah. that's one of my concerns with the end of this film is like, who is going to be of Infinity War? It's like, who of your favorite characters is going to be killed? But also, what is the weight of it? Because in what capacity are they going to show up in these future films? Right. Well, I mean, I personally hope that you know, when they're dead, they're dead. But and do you actually think that that's going to happen? I do to a certain degree because not only because I want to believe that the that's going to be the reality, but also people's contracts are up where people. Uh, Making fifty million dollars versus someone who's a million dollars, like right. hmm, fifty times I, three is one fi- hundred and fifty million. I agree. I mean, I hope that they else. also have the opportunity to pass the mantle <clears throat> on and do other Most versions definitely. of Absolutely. these characters. Well, I feel that th- that's an inevitability, especially with the comic books having already done that. If you want to learn about certain things, where characters could be going in the future go to the comic book store and you'll find out, I mean, especially with characters like Iron, Iron Man. Man. So yeah. I feel that's, you know, the, the possibilities are endless with Avengers Infinity War and then phase four, which is just gonna be a whole other universe of fun. But let's get into comic books for a minute. We're gonna do the comic book pull list. So I'm gonna list off five comics that you should be picking up today on Wednesday. We are gonna be moving our comic book pull list to Mondays. So that way it gives you a sweaty two extra days to get your list together, go into that comic book store on Wednesday and pick it up. But here's the list right now. Starting with number five, we've got Cave Carson. 
has an interstellar eye number one. <laughs> so if you haven't been reading Cave Carson, this is a young animal imprint that Gerard Way and his team of weirdos have been doing. It's fantastic. I love all of them. Shade the Changing Woman. Check it out. But I like Cave Carson. It's really weird and, and offbeat. This one's written by Jonathan Rivera and Michael Avon Oming, who did Powers with Brian Michael Bendis. He's an incredible artist, so it's nice to see him on this book. Number four, we've got Brian Azzarello and Eduardo Riso, mm. the incredible team from 100 Bullets, doing their film noir gangsters fighting werewolves in Moonshine number eight. So if you haven't picked it up, uh, the trade for the first six is available. And then just get these individual issues because they're so much fun. Every issue you're like, man, now I gotta wait 30 more days. This is a lot of fun. Brave and the Bold is number three. And it's actually the number two issue. It's written and drawn by Liam Sharp. Get that name down. He was the artist on Wonder Woman. This is his own thing. It's Wonder Woman and Batman fighting a whole bunch of crazy fairies and green goblin-y kind of gob, you know. It's, a, it. it's the, the mythos come to life uh, as only could be illustrated and told by Liam Sharp. So definitely check that out. Number two, it's always on my list. Kill or Be Killed, number 17. So Ed Brubaker, Sean Phillips, just literally killing it. This now, now we're going to find out if the if you haven't been following Killer Be Killed, whether the beast is going to hang around. So check that out. And number one, we've got Thor 705. It's finally happening. Jason Aaron's entire Thor run. This one drawn by Russell Dodderman, the female Thor. She's got cancer. Man Gog is there. This is it. It's the final epi the final issue. Pick this up, Jane Foster. We don't know what's going to happen, but we have a pretty good guess. Any of these comics pop off to you guys? Um, I am a fan of mythology, and I love Liam Sharp, so I think Brave and the Bold is something that I would definitely be interested yeah, in picking up. Yeah, yeah. I'm not reading. I've been uh, keeping up with Doomsday Clock is one that I, I love, and I've been getting really into Valiant Comics. Actually, I got to do a show with them uh, last year, and they sent me like a huge box of comics, which if you haven't, is that okay to like plug sure. Valiant? I don't know. If you haven't, <laughs> because a lot of people will message me and say, um, like, oh, I didn't know that they were, they had revamped everything. And, and, uh, yeah, like a, a giant big part of that is all due to Dinesh. Who yeah, had, Dinesh is amazing. He had brought that, all yes. those characters back from basically nowhere, the dustbin. Him and his partner kind of bought those characters and brought all these amazing, talented writers and artists. So if you like Valiant Comics, it's all really pretty much due to Dinesh. So look him up, find out what he's up to. He's one of the, you know, the spotlight creators of Valiant Comics. Uh, what do you think? Well, I mean, look, uh, you got me into Kill or Be Killed and <clears throat> during comic book shopping, which I've been loving. I mean, again, that creative team, everything they do is gold. Yeah. If you haven't seen Criminal, it's Criminal that you haven't Criminal, read yet. It's <laughs> fantastic. There's great hardcover editions of that, so you should get those. Uh, the Jason Aaron Thors, I mean, I, I've, I've just started in on that. Again, I learned about that on from you and Amy. And uh, I have not gotten to where that comic is, but I, I'm sure when the omnibus comes out, I will get there. Yeah. But my Moonshine, I don't know anything about. I'll, oh. I can't wait to read well, that. Well, I mean, yeah, it's really... I'll it, read, it, I, werewolves are my... I love werewolves. It's really well done, and it's in the same flavor that Azarello and Riso have done with 100 Bullets and their other collaborations. But yeah, Jason Aaron isn't a well-known writer yet, like on the same level as a lot of these other uh, writers who have listed off, but he will be. Because, I mean, not only did he yeah. write an incredible run on Darth Vader, um, but, you know, he's written a ton of Star Wars comics that are just above and beyond what you'd expect them to be. They're just like, because he loves those characters. He also loves Thor, and now he's moving on to Avengers number one in the, with the Marvel's Fresh Start initiative. So, you know, check out these comics. And like I said, we'll be moving to Monday with our pull list. It gives you an extra couple days to get in there on Wednesday. Let's get into minor mutations, starting with Legends of Tomorrow. Matt Ryan, that's right, Constantine, is going to become a series regular in front of them announcing season four, which they haven't actually done, but they'd be stupid to not pick it up. And they weren't stupid with like, hey, we're not letting Constantine go. No, nah, you're not going anywhere, dude. <laughs> They're holding on to that trench coat. They're like, we get, we know, you're, <laughs> we know we did the the cartoon series, but you're gonna stick around. And I can't be more than happy because I think he's like one of the, the best additions to Legends of Tomorrow, as well as his series got cut way too short mm -hmm. when he was doing Constantine. I wanted to see that run. I want to see at least 30 or 40 episodes, but at least now we get his flavor on there. What do you think about that? So I wasn't able to keep up with the show while mm -hmm. it was on. Um, I want to go back and do it. My favorite Constantine stories or Hellblazer stories have always been like in comics when he is crossed 
over with other people, mm-hmm. like with Batman and uh, when he's in Justice League and Sandman. His his uh, appearance in Sandman is one of my favorites. Uh, so I and because he's just really great with people. Uh, so I, I'm looking forward to seeing that interact the interactions that he has with everybody. Right. I want to see him flirt him with girls and guys. It'll be great. <laughs> what do you think, Danny? Um, I got to actually interview Matt Ryan at Comic Con, and that was when everyone was really optimistic about the show. Um, so, and I do feel like Co- Constantine has um, this like cult following where I agree with you that they were really smart, that they like don't want to let go of him. Every time he has popped up in these CW shows, I feel like people have been really excited about it. I also see Matt Ryan himself like interacting with fans on Twitter, which I think is important. Um, he also had retweeted a uh, stunt person that was talking about how more stunt men and women need to be recognized in the award shows because we just had award season. Sure. I thought that was really cool. He's a really positive part of the community, and I think that everybody is is really excited about it, as well as the animated series, uh, which is also dropping again, I think, this this weekend. Yeah, for sure. What do you think about Matt Ryan? Well, I, look, Constantine is one of my favorite characters in the DC Universe. I read the entire Vertigo run, what is that? Hellblazer. Hundred, hundreds yeah. of Hellblazer comics. And some of my favorite comics of all. Now, does that character work with the Legends of Tomorrow? I can't wait to see what they do because he's like, what a, I mean, the whole show's wacky. Right. But in terms of a wacky, like, what does John Constantine do when they go to some different time? Well, or he's been in several episodes realm? already. Oh, I know. So, I mean, but as a series, I like the interaction. Like, I want to see them bring a Newcastle story, like, if you remember that right. from the comics. Yes. A really awfully horrific story where lots of people die in horrible ways. How do the legends of tomorrow face something like that? Sure. And, I would like yeah. a, a Constantine centric storyline where they're not ready for what's going to happen. I to would them. love them to bring the Legends of Tomorrow back into the time of King Arthur and Morgana Le Fay, but bring the demon in. Because then you could have this oh really God. cool kind of crossover with Constantine, magic, And they already know and the each demon. other, like because the demon could yeah. be in different times at once yeah, or whatever. Jason Blood, he's been yeah. around, he's yeah. immortal. So sure I think that's, that's a, a great you know, idea. Yeah. You guys can have that Legends of Tomorrow people. <laughs> Greg Berlanti, I know you're like, just don't have any more ideas. Feel free to take ours. Um, Cloak and Dagger, let's get right into the next one. Cloak and Dagger's got a brand new trailer. And it's the first one to actually officially kind of set up the storyline. It's in New Orleans. They give you a little mm-hmm. bit of dialogue from the characters. So far, everything has been pretty visual, which has been cool. This is a freeform series. What are your thoughts about Cloak and Dagger? It looks fantastic. I love the style of it. Um, I uh, Friends have told me that they feel it looks sort of like low, low rent or like low, low budget mm-hmm. stuff. I love that sort of stripped down feel to it. Right. It makes it feel interesting and gritty and different from a lot of the other shows mm-hmm. and how they feel. Um, and these are stories, these kids, I want to know who they are. Uh, and I know, I think in the original comics, um, they their powers come from drugs. So I don't know how they're going to handle that if they're going to <laughs> Same. change that. Well, that's the thing. I know right. that's a very controversial point. So are yeah, they going to change it? Probably. Or are they going to lean into it? They might do a little bit of both, of both. Is, my, is my feeling yeah. about it. It, and I don't feel it looks low rent. I feel it's just it feels smaller, which I Small, like. Well, that's the thing. And I mean, and that's how I feel. Yeah, yeah. It and there's well. no reason to have like then we've got this giant tracking shot across seven football fields. <laughs> yeah. right. It's not calling for that kind of stuff. What do you think? Um, I feel like this is free forms like dipping their toe in the water to like get on the Marvel train that that everyone else is on. I do. I think that it feels different than the other teenage shows. I agree that it feels gritty. To me, when I watched the trailer, I was like, okay, even though this is on free form, it does feel a lot like the Marvel Netflix it series. It's yeah. darker, even though it's teenagers, it has a lot of adult themes. I know that they kind of had this romantic tension-ish right. in there, which um, I am excited to see, but also nervous for them, because I feel like they're connected with their superpowers, but then if you're romantic, it's kind of like being stuck with a coworker that you've hooked up with. Right. So I feel like, I don't, <laughs> I, I think there's gonna be what? some, uh, no, no comment on that. No, <laughs> no comment on that. But I do like the grittiness of it, and I feel they're going to lean into that. And that's what the trailer, I, I feel like, set up. Right. It feels like, it definitely, it feels, it, gritty is a good word for it, because it feels like it's a little bit, it's going to be a little bit darker than maybe Runaways. Right. Um, and even Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., it's just a totally different kind of, of series, and I like that they're going with that. What do you think, Robert? Well, you know, I always love these characters, and the romance between them, you know, it was never overt. It was like they loved each other more than siblings, more than lovers. They had this bond that was sort of unbreakable. And it was always sort of sad. Like in the comics, they were always kind of characters that made me 
they, they couldn't be together the, the way they wanted they to be together. They were very goth. They were very goth. I mean, <laughs> yeah, before I like even knew what goth, goth yeah, was. No one so knew what goth emo. was. Before The Crow became the, the, the yeah. zeppelin of goth. They were like, they're, they listen the, to The, the Cure <laughs> when you're reading those Cloak and Dagger comics and then you're going to be watching Freeform. I mean, that's what it was like. And, and as long as they show us what the inside of the cloak is like, that's what I'm really wanting. Well, you're going to have to wait till the end of the season. I, I mean, I sure. always wanted to know, like, what's it like if you go in there? Yeah. What is that like? <laughs> Only Dagger knows. I mean, um, yes. We'll hey, see. Let's talk about Brainiac. Guess what? That guy's finally making his appearance, and it's not in Man of Steel 2. It's in this series called Krypton about Superman's grandpa. What? That's right. On Sci-Fi Channel, they've got a Krypton television show starring Segel, that's right, jor -El's dad, Super Cal els grandpa. And they were like, you know, when I first heard about this, I was like, I'm not going to watch this. Screw that. Now I'm, I'm going to watch it. They got you. They got me. And how'd they get me? With cool production design and interesting stories. And one of them is Brainiac. And now, having done The Death of Superman Lives, what happened in it, a documentary that you can find out about <laughs> Nick Cage and Tim Burton's Superman, which was going to have Christopher Walken Christopher play. Walken! That's right, oh, Eric is a fan. What could have been? He was going to play Brainiac. Well, now we're going to see a <laughs> Brainiac and a Skull Ship and a collector of different characters and creatures from all around the universe. That's the character that was going to be in the Burton film, and that's the character that is in this series. How is it going to be as compared to the animated version of Brainiac. What are your thoughts? Let's start with you, Danny. Um, I don't know, because I feel fans have a very, unlike some of these other characters, I feel like they're very selective of mm -hmm. what they want from Brainiac. I love the fact that he said it is going to be terrifying because I feel that that fits in with it being on sci-fi. Right. And I feel like maybe that's how they got you because I know you're a big creature feature person. Yes. So, and I saw it as well. And he even said that like he was walking around the corner and it, he like scared a crew member, mm -hmm. <laughs> which that's great. Well, that's right. Bla Blake Ritson, who is who's playing Brainiac, right. is Saying the character is terrifying. Is terrifying. Yeah. Um, and I also think it goes into our whole topic on villains that you kind of like, this is a villain who feels justified, who feels whole and complete in what he's doing. And so I think even his portrayal might just be unsettling mm. of him, but also the seven hours of makeup that they've put in. Definitely. <laughs> I, 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 I'm very much looking forward to seeing this Brainiac. How about you, Rob? I can't wait. I mean, you know, the Brainiac from the animated series was kind of, in the Superman animated right. Justice League. That to me was my definitive version of Brainiac. I mean, in terms of what we've seen on screen before. Right. And I love the character design of this Brainiac. I mean, it just looks great. And like you said, everything about this show, I didn't want to watch this show. And the more I see from it, it looks like if it's an interesting science fiction superhero show, kind of the way Man of Steel, to me, we talked about this before, sure. was an interesting science fiction first contact story more than it might have been a Superman story. Right. But that's why I liked Man of Steel. But I, I, I see a lot of that, some really heady science fiction concepts mm -hmm. in this show. And if it can illuminate what Krypton is like, kind of like when John Byrne was illuminating Krypton back in the, the 80s, right. I'm all for it. Yeah, I mean, we've got Adam Strange and Zeta Beams, so that's already saying we're probably going to go to the planet, is it Ron or Ran? Ran, I always said Ran. Uh, Kira Kurosawa's Ron. I guess it's Ran. <laughs> I ran so far away. It's two ends. <laughs> Tell me if I'm right or wrong. Let's move on to Shazam. There's a teaser poster. That's right. Look at that. There's a big lightning bolt and a Z, yeah. and it's Shazam. Roka loves it. Um, I think it's a cool, yeah, it's a cool logo. There it is. Um, but you know what? Entertainment Weekly is going to have some kind of live event that's going on where probably Zachary and a whole bunch of the other character, the people in the film will be showing up maybe in costume, maybe we'll get a teaser trailer. We don't know, but that's gonna be later on today. What are your thoughts on this poster and Shazam in general, Erica? Oh man, it's a, it, I love that it's so colorful. I'm so excited because Billy Batson, it's, they're, they're doing Billy Batson for, for this one. Oh, yeah. like, and, and it's, he, I mean, he's a kid, and and that's it. Has always had sort of this. Even when it got really dark, it had sort of this childlike wonder and and joy to it at at the center of all of it. And and so I'm I'm glad to see that the poster kind of looks like a, a kid movie poster. Mm -hmm. There's color and it's bright. Uh, so we 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 have little bits. Um, from from this movie, we don't know a ton about it yet. Right. But the bits that I've seen, I'm really excited. Yeah, I think about. The, the, their sales tool worked for me. They were like, "It's big with superpowers." I'm like, "I'm sold." That's all I really. <laughs> yeah. I really didn't need any more. You know, I, I'll just go see it. Don't even show me a trailer. With the piano. Yeah. As yeah, well. like, but a superpower. It's like smashing the piano. Whatever. I mean, all I all I wanted out of a Shazam or Cat Marvel movie was I didn't want to see the 1970s, oh, late right. 70s or early 80s series where it's like a teenage Shazam and an old man in a van like oh, it traveling was around. 
early mid 70s mysteries you know it's like scooby-doo with shazam but i didn't want to see that i would take way more of the the power hour with isis because that was my jam what do you think robert look it's it's exactly what i wanted to see from this film like i've always loved the marvel family I, and the color, like you had said, the color is really important. If they had muted this, I remember when the, the Flash TV series came out in, what, 90? Right. They muted this, the costume, you right. know, because Batman had come out and they had to... Get a I weird had, muscle suit. I didn't like that. Yeah. I don't... I, when, you, when you see Shazam, everyone's complaining about the costume. No, I want the bright red, mm -hmm. big red cheese. That's what it is. When this kid... If you were a kid and you dreamed yourself being a superhero yeah, and you became a superhero, true. you would want it yeah. to be colorful and be like, here I am, yeah. you know, and why not in a lightning flash at a word? I mean, it's, it's if they nail the tone, it's all for me about tone and verisimilitude, mm -hmm. then it's going to be great. I'm hoping in my heart that it's like Superman 2 and Savannah is Zod. I want to see Jeremy, uh, Jeremy, uh, is Jeremy Strong? Mark, or? Mark Strong. Strong. Thank you. I'm, I don't know why I'm saying Jeremy. Mark Strong as Savannah being like a Zod throwing Shazam around, the, you know, around the city. That's the kind of thing I want to see. I return to that kind of Superman 2 heroics. That's what it feels like to me. Speaking of Captain Marvel, Shazam, we got the other Captain Marvel from Marvel, and that's shooting here in LA right now. Here's some behind the scenes pictures. That's right, she's in that Kree outfit, yo. Mm -hmm. Read the comics. That's, you know, she, that's probably going to change, but that's the Kree outfit. So we don't know if that is introduced in Avengers Infinity War. I guess the Russo brothers are saying Captain Marvel's in there. Oh, they said it. They yeah. absolutely said that if, if you all watch the entertainment, the long, full length entertainment weekly, interviews that are on YouTube. Mm -hmm. There's like a 15 minute interview with the Russo brothers. They say that she's in Infinity War. Mm -hmm. Well, then I'm gonna believe Come them. Come right out and say it. My guess is probably a, you know an extra credit sequence at yeah, the end. Yeah, that's what I think that those original photos were for because this those photos that you guys are showing now are from the official production that just started. Right. So everyone's like, well, what were those other photos we mm -hmm. saw? I wonder if they're a post credit right? scene. I actually didn't know that her film is set in the early 90s. Right. I'm very <laughs> excited to see her dancing a TL see and like having one of those slap bracelets oh that's or right <laughs> totally uh, i didn't even think about all the musical choices yeah, that they're they gonna better, have now i know that they're gonna have everyone's cashing in on nostalgia so i better see some crystal pepsi some ecto cooler well, i want to hear some thing. nirvana yeah, some is, sound garden is that it's uh up until like last Spice, year Spice Girls. 80s 80s nostalgia has been the thing 90s we 90s are in, nostalgia i am ready that's right. i'm so ready I for finally it. get all the references for once so. that's right yeah all the yeah. 90s references all and the and with can, both eyes. And you can see it in the video and, and the and the new photos, like the hairstyle. She's got like the friends, you know, yes, Jennifer Esther Rachel. friends. Oh, yeah. The Rachel. The Rachel. <laughs> I even forgot there was a word for it. The Rachel. I feel like Robert That's right. checked out. I'm well, not. Not at all. You know, I just, I'm a child of the 80s. But I do love the fact that, I mean, if we hear waterfalls... You know, come Thank on. You, you know, all that's right. uh, I'm all about that. I'm mm -hmm. all about that. And there was a lot of great hip hop in the nineties. Sure Much was. Much better yeah. than now. Yeah. I want to hear some Eric B and Rakim. I want to hear some public enemy. Uh, I don't know if we're going to hear all that, but I'm looking forward to going back to the 90s. I don't want to be in the 90s for the whole movie. I hope we go into outer space. Maybe we'll go into the quantum realm. Who knows how they're going to figure out all this time travel stuff because she's got to get back into the present is my guess if she's going to show up in Avengers 4. Um, but those are cool behind the scenes pictures. I think the outfit looks great. Um, let's get into Zuko and Mar Maroni are showing up in the Titans series. Mm -hmm. So these are some Batman and Robin villains, uh, some famous villains. You gotta, you know, you gotta hate Zuko. He's killed, you know, Grayson's parents. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's like the Joe Chill for Robin. Right. So, and then Maroney showed up. I think I want to say his first appearance was in year one. He was like the, you know, Frank I Miller established would, yeah. him. Yeah. That whole series of the crime bosses and kind of gave that. Hey, everybody doesn't have to be a, a super villain with weird makeup to be a villain in the Batman series. It's really about crime. And that's what Christopher Nolan was able to pull so much from with his whole trilogy. Less so the third one, more so the first two. What are your thoughts about Zuko and Maroni showing up? What do you think? Uh, so one of my favorite episodes of Batman the Animated Series is Robin's Reckoning, mm. where uh, it uh, Zuko is back on the scene, and then Robin yeah. has to grapple with this fact that this man who killed his family mm -hmm. is walking the streets, and and he he wants revenge, and he has to yep. sort of tap into that humanity and and let go of it. It's such such an incredible point for Robin because it's in so many other comics and, and movies we don't get to see that side of Robin um, and and it's and so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that and then also yeah in, in Long Halloween and um, in year one the Moroni crime family is it's so 
they're even more insidious than these colorful uh, villains of the rogues gallery yeah. because they own Gotham. Right. And that's terrifying. And, and, and like there's, there's a really chilling scene in, um, in year one where, where Batman, you know, he crashes their party and he tells them um, like, your time is up. Mm-hmm. This is, this is it. And that is how he establishes himself as a force to be reckoned with in Gotham. They're in, integral to, to Gotham's fabric. And I'm, I'm so excited they're going to be part of it. I was very happy to see Eric Roberts play Maroney mm-hmm. in the dark yeah. Knight. What are your thoughts about this crime um, family? Yeah. I also I agree with the fact that you know because it is Teen Titans they're teens they're still learning how to rectify the, they're still learning how to be heroes and so having to rectify not murdering or not killing someone that has harmed them in some way in order to, that they can still call themselves superheroes so I love the fact that this kind of shows us that it's going to focus on their origin stories because I think that that's important oh, yeah. Um, but yeah I also agree that it's going to keep it grounded uh, mm-hmm. as far as the fight scenes as far as it just feeling um, yeah more 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 connected and and uh well i mean one of the interesting things zuko and maroney they're like we were saying they're real people teen titans so far we've seen hawk and dove we've seen they're doing doom patrol so more out you know out there characters so it's nice to see that they are going to go back into like hey uh grayson's revenge streak we all already know jason todd's being introduced so it's kind of cool how they're playing with all the different characters what are your thoughts about well you know i've said many times in the show that the new teen titans are one of my favorite superhero teams of all time Mm -hmm. especially the the marv wolfman uh perez run was very important to me and and to me seeing jeff johns who's a huge creative influence on this show right he's also wrote a great run on the titans he's bringing all that flavor and I, I'm deliriously excited for the show. The same way I'm excited for Infinity War, I'm excited for the Titans. I think more so than any other superhero TV series to date. So does DC Access, or whatever the hell they're calling it, do they have your money because of the Teen Titans? Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. They, yeah. I, I cannot wait for this show. But then again, am I setting myself up? Should I not be this excited? No, you should be. Yeah, I'm very excited. I think you should very be very excited. excited. I'm just gonna buy it on like Voodoo or what is it, Xbox. I don't <laughs> think I can is. subscribe. I mean, I'll pay the three bucks per episode. I don't care. I'm not really a hundred percent like getting into. I, there's already way too many streaming services that have got my mind. So, but it uh, just looks great, man. This show. If they introduce Trigon, which you know they're going to, you know, I'm gonna Raven, lose my, If Raven's in it, I'm gonna Trigon's lose, in. It. I'm gonna lose my so, mind. Lose well, my you mind. prepare to lose your mind. And brother blood, mother mayhem. I mean, you know, yeah. come on. These are deep cuts, baby. The so, you know what? Let's move on. Venom. Is Venom going to be in Venom? The, so we're hearing like reports <laughs> that the, sure? full, the full revealed character of Venom is only in the movie for like two minutes or something. He shows up at the end to fight like another doctor who's like Carnage or so, one of the super symbiotes. So keep hearing this. I highly doubt that. Whatever this rumor is, I can almost guarantee you that they're completely wrong. Um, my guess is that Venom is going to be a giant part of it, and it's not just going to be Tom Tom Hardy with a couple of tendrils when he gets it. You won't like me when the tendrils show up. <laughs> guess what? You won't like him when he's full Venom. So I think you're going to. It's called Venom. They're not going to chimp out and be like, "Well, he's I don't Venom know." In the last Did you minute. see Beetlejuice? He's only in 17 minutes of his own film. So <laughs> well, and those it's seven Beetlejuice. Those 17 minutes are some of the best they parts are, of Beetlejuice are. in the I world. I have a lot of thoughts about this because I feel we always rush. What do we know about Venom is that it's probably going to have a sequel. I mean, all of these superhero slash right. villain comic book films, if they even do remotely good, or even when they do bad, they also get a sequel. And so I don't mind the fact that they might take their time in marinating in this character. I don't feel like we necessarily have to rush it. Right. I agree, it probably won't be the final three minutes. But I'm not necessarily, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing if they actually focus more on us connecting and being um yeah, us connecting and having a relationship with this character. Yeah, I mean, I agree 100%. We, we want to know who Eddie Brock is. We want to find we out that world. We want to be invested world. in him yeah, and, have, and his world and his motivations before he goes Before he gets Venom. the symbiote outfit and like before he starts having conversations with himself. Who knows what they're going to do? What do you think? I sometimes wonder if this film was started its... Uh, started out as just kind of a film that was not Venom or related to (laughs) this universe in any way. And they're like, this seems like a good script. I bet it would be good if we like put a Venom in it. 
Uh, I don't know. It just is the feeling that I got with the way that they spun it up and the fact that there's no Spider-Man in it and uh, and just like how the production of it, uh, it it just has that feeling. So I kind of wouldn't be surprised if we only got like a little taste of Venom. Uh, but I but I wonder. I I really like Tom Hardy, right? And uh, it's it'll be interesting to see who he is without the Spider Man origin story because it's so deeply tied in with that world, right? I don't think they're going to do the Spider Man origin that we're used to, like with Spider Man getting the symbiote suit from Avengers, you know, Secret Wars, unless he gets it in Infinity War. Hint, <laughs> hint. And you know, and and there's this whole they've adapted like two different comic book runs to write this screenplay, yeah. so it's definitely based on the comics. But obviously, they had to take Spider Man out. It's Peter Parker's in it. What do you think, Robert? Well, look, if you think about movies like like you had said, 17 minutes with Beetlejuice in Alien. <laughs> the the character of the alien is not in the movie very much. Split, a recent film that I really enjoyed, Shyamalan mm -hmm. Split, uh, 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 another prequel to the Unbreakable sequel. Right. Uh, the Beast character shows up at the end of the film, sequel. and it's fine. Yeah. Uh, well, it, a prequel to the Unbreakable sequel. Right, right. To, <laughs> yeah. to Glass, yeah. And, and there's no reason, if Venom goes full Venom, you know, at the end of the film, that doesn't mean you're not going to get a, an hour and 45 minutes of awesome yeah, because it could be. Yep. Who knows what kind of yeah. like getting into Eddie Brock's world and his character and who he is, the pathos of of why he becomes Venom can be incredibly compelling. Yeah. What if it's a flashback story the way they structured Deadpool? You know, we don't know. You watch Deadpool throughout. I mean, yes, he's got a big action scene. He's basically fighting on the bridge the entire movie, but they come in and out of that sequence. Totally. So who knows? Why does everybody get upset? Oh, he's not going to show up till the end of the movie. If it's a good movie, who cares when he yeah. shows up? As long as it's good, yeah. you don't know yet. I well, feel like yeah. it's a braver choice because it forces you to focus on storytelling as opposed to just relying on this big... Yeah, ben, and, I mean, we, and yeah, we've I seen guess. of supervillains fighting other villains or superheroes, like, and that's how most of these superhero films end anyway. So we kind of know there's going to be, I'll be fighting you in my costume at the in the last five minutes. But maybe there's something more. It's, it is a psychological horror film, so it's yeah. something to look forward to. You know what I'm looking forward to? This brand new Atari that they announced. This has <laughs> nothing to do with comic books. It's the Atari VCS. That's right. What the hell, Atari? Look at that. That looks like right out of the 80s. Well, it's not. It's from now. It's coming out. So they're going to be previewing this like this coming weekend at some sweat fest for video game people. They're going to be like <laughs> and playing with the old Atari joystick, but yet it's all new again. So I had to mention that that this is, you know, that's what I grew up with was the Atari, you know, ColecoVision before all you ki all you kids got the Nintendo oh, World and television. So, television. Yeah, I ended up getting the ColecoVision because I was like, no, I'm going to get that. So um, once I had a job. But anyway, um, what do you guys think? Atari? Oh. You're going you're gonna to get at this Atari thing? Okay, so if I can, because uh, as we've seen with all the other retro consoles that have been coming out, the re-releases, the NES, and, right. and um, it's, it's their extremely limited run, and uh, collectors and game enthusiasts will snap them up instantly. They'll go out on eBay for Oof. way, way, way more Oof. than you are able to pay for them. Right. Um, but yes, I will, I will probably get a hold of one at some point, because um, video games is like a thing that I do. Um, and so I, I'm interested to see it, because I never grew up with Atari, the Atari system. That was a little before my time. I still and have the like, box. I yeah. have the original Atari with the box open in my attic. I still have my original N64 with Diddy Kong Racing and Turok, so you're not going to get me on nostalgia. I still kept mine, <laughs> but I'll probably play yours. Yeah, Schnepp. I'll we'll have come a big party. Thank you. Yeah, you I, can I, invest it in. The, the rest of us will play. Show that turns. picture again one more time. Throw up that Atari box picture. Oh, also, that so reminds me a little bit of Videodrome. That's for some reason I I just get these like flashbacks from the '80s of a David Cronenberg horror movie. So that's what I'm personally hoping happens. There, yeah, there's different. Uh, versions of it and that's like the wood paneling version uh -huh. the wood panel version which is like the sexiest one definitely yeah that's the one i'm getting what do you think robert okay no interest at all yeah. <laughs> even back in the day when you got the atari asteroids cartridge and you hoped that it would be like the stand-up quarter console game. It right. was terrible. Right. All Atari games are terrible. I pl except maybe Adventure. Adventure, where yeah. this yeah. this uh, Adventure, idea, you're a little tiny square that has to fight we, the duck. We live in a world of a video game renaissance. The video <laughs> games. Get, tweet him. The video <laughs> games that him. exist today are amazing. I'll go back to N64 because I'll play Shadows of the Empire, right? Which was a great game, or Goldeneye, Goldeneye which was one of the greatest video sure. games of all time. 
80s video games, come on. <laughs> you People are all crazy. This, the, uh, It's like, I love these you people. You didn't like I, Pong? I, I love my LaserDisc Forever fans. I, belong, <laughs> I belong to this Facebook group, and I'm like, we have 4K. When I had LaserDisc, I was a retailer. I, I was like, one day we're going to get better Robert, video this, than this. This new Atari this, is not from the 80s. It's all new games. Oh, it is? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's then, not, okay. Well, they're going to have, have, not, it's gonna have both. new games. It's, it's like the retreads of the old ones, so they'll play a little smoother, and, but you'll, they'll all be available. The only old it's video game I want history. is... history. Look, no, no, no. The only, historical it, value. The historical... There's a reason we live in the future. The future is better than the past. It always has been. It always will be. <laughs> oh, we have man. antibiotics now. No. We live longer. Imagine playing asteroids, but it's like better. you're in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon and the asteroids Look, are rotating I'm all for around. That. Shoot With modern graphics. And I'm all not that. even saying that's happening. I'm just and making it up. And I was a video gamer. <laughs> Look, I grew up with these game systems, but even when I had Atari back in 1980, I'm like, this sucks. The controllers always broke. My mom was like, your thumb had a many, blister. How many controllers are you going to break? I'm like, my mom, my friends and I, we get a little into it. Yeah. The only old video game I like is Activision's Battlezone. Not the 80s Battlezone, but the redone Battlezone they did in the late 90s, which is one of the greatest video games I've ever played, even to this day. Well, look, I'll That's take it. Pitfall any day and jumping over alligators. Let's get into Deadpool 2. It's got a secret cameo. That's what we keep hearing. We know it's scored to 98. All right, we're going to see the movie anyway. Who is the cameo? That's what I want to, I want to think about this for a minute. And who do you think the cameo is? Like, after reading about Patrick Stewart saying he would be Professor X in Legion, yeah. I was like, all right, so that's tied well, up. That's going to happen. So the only other person that would play Professor X would be James McAvoy. So my guess is it's leaning towards that. What are your thoughts? Secret, secret cameo. I almost, when, in cases like this, I kind of don't want to speculate because you hear things around town and, you know, you don't want to like From the same anything. people. Yeah, maybe, but like, uh, yeah, so, but I don't know. I think any of the X-Men would be really cool. Um, knowing that it's Deadpool and really cheeky, we could just get like a celebrity right. cameo, like not anything to do with the Marvel <laughs> cinema, cinematic universe. So that would be fun. Or uh, maybe like a super obscure <laughs> X-Men character. Who do you think? Yeah. Um, as far as the cameo, I think maybe, I don't know, I think it would be funny if they had Hugh Jackman, just like the actor Hugh Jackman. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. would be hilarious because um, he exists in their world. Right. So, um, as the actor, so that would be funny if he was just there. Um, possibly, maybe the thing, I think. I would maybe. love to see that. That would be amazing if it was, the thing was in it. You know, what do you think? Well, I, look, I've, as like everyone, I've heard a few things, and there's one thing I heard that- A few that, things. A few yeah. things, a few things, <laughs> about more than one cameo. Then there was something that was described to me that if true, is the single greatest cameo in any superhero movie ever. That's all I'm gonna we say. We won't reveal that. But yes, I've heard multiple, uh, multiple cameos, not just one. But I, I think that, you know, uh, X-Men Dark Phoenix was filming at the same time that Deadpool 2 was filming. So maybe there's some crossover there. That's all I'm gonna say. That'd be fantastic. Let's get into the last minor mutation, and it's about Justice League. So, you know, before this Justice League that just came out last year with, uh, you know, Henry Cavill, with the mustache, Superman, all this other stuff, regardless of what you thought of this Justice League, there was an earlier Justice League. It was called Justice League Mortal, and George Miller from Mad Max fame, as well as Happy Feet fame, was gonna direct it. Uh, take a look at this picture of art. Uh, it was a DJ Corona. Um, DJ, I'm sorry, DJ Katrona playing Superman. So that's an outfit that they actually had. That was what his Superman outfit was actually going to look like. That was a finished, this is before they had rebooted Superman. Um, this was after the Brian Singer Superman, but what, before the Man of Steel. So this is kind of a middle, middle range Superman. And, uh, and, be, and before we show this last picture, let me just say, no one's ever seen this oh. ever on planet Earth. I got a source that sent this to me uh -oh. from Australia, so check this out. Bam, son. Uh, That's the actual Justice League mortal team photo of all the outfits of all the characters. Army Hammer as Batman, DJ Katrona as Superman, Megan Gale as Wonder Woman, Adam Brody as Flash. Common was gonna play Green Lantern. I don't think that's Common. That's a person standing in the outfit that he's gonna be. Um, Hugh Keys Burn was Martian Manhunter. You know him as a Morton Joe. Santiago Cabrera was Aquaman. Teresa Palmer, Natalia Gould, all these other people. Jay Baruchel was gonna play Maxwell Lord. But that photo right there is the actual costumes 
for the Justice League, literally a few, it could have been about a week before the writer's strike officially shut everything oh down. They had the Justice League, actual, the entire set built. Of their, their, I mean, if you get a chance to go online, do yourself a favor and read that script. It's actually really fun. Why? Because it's like reading a comic book. It ends, I'm gonna just spoil it for you. You're not gonna see the movie. It's this from like <laughs> 10 years ago. This is like Iron Man was already playing in theaters when they were like canceling this. Check it out. It ended with Starro showing up, and literally Aww. all they're all in their there's you know they're all in the Hall of Justice. And they're all suiting up, and the Superman's like, "Let's do it." Let's he said, "Let's do it." Let's do it. It should have been, "Let's do this," but you know, look, you know, I'll give it. You know, they're gonna fight Starro at the end of Just League, as how this new Just League should have ended. But you know, look, what do you guys thought? What are your thoughts about the Superman and entire Just League outfit? To me, seeing that Army Hammer Batman as looking that cool. And then seeing some of the other outfits not looking as like the Green Lantern one looks kind of chimpy, just looks cheesy to me. Uh, the Flash, I mean, literally, it kind of looks sort of like the Flash now. So Superman just way too spandexy, but not that bad. When you really look at it, it's, I thought the Wonder Woman outfit looks great. What are your thoughts? To me, this shot looks like an Alex Ross. It does. And it's beautiful. I. I'm so thrilled that I got a chance to see this. Um, I'm a huge George Miller fan, and um, I, I think Army Hammer would have made an amazing Batman. Yeah. I think I, I joked that uh, when I saw a man from Uncle, that it's like, oh, we finally got our Batman versus Superman. Yep, right. uh, but <laughs> it's just, this looks great. I love the costume designs, and yeah, the, the sort of like the high tech. Uh, it, he almost looks like a, you know, have you seen the Kotobukiya figures? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep, yep like, you're absolutely right. Oh, it's so cool. This is so neat. Somebody what do you talking. think, Danny? Oh my, no, I agree. I love it. I love the colors of it. I don't mind the tight spandex. Okay? Yeah, I They're love <laughs> spandex. I miss spandex in hero movies. Please. If we could get the outside underwear as well, I'd be down. <laughs> Um, no, I really like it. I, I I like current Wonder Woman's more. I think it's right. but um I don't I don't mind this, but I agree about Army. Um yeah, I don't know. This looks like some of my fan fictions. So. Yeah, you know, I mean <laughs> to be honest with you, whether a lot a lot of people are like, oh, the script is bad, this and that, and then you're like, you have to remember that George Miller was directing this. And there's like a 45 minute animatic that's done showing all of the action. I mean, remember this 2008, this is like, this isn't 1972 where like, we're cobbling stuff together with sticks. They had computer graphics, okay? <laughs> this was all thought out. They had everything storyboarded. They had everything planned. This was gonna be massive. This was gonna be a giant film that we're never gonna see. But it's, it's, oh, I'm always happy to like, you know, get stuff like this sent to me anonymously. What do you think, Robert? Martian Manhunter. He looks badass. That's what I think. One of my favorite characters ever. I've always loved the Martian Manhunter, and he looks great. And 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 he was also the toe cutter in uh, right. the original Mad That's Max. That's right. And yeah, I mean, not only a Morton, Morton Joe, Joe and he was the toe and cutter. George Miller, and then uh, Megan, not Meg, the Knight Rider. Megan Gale actually was uh, one of the warriors in the original Road Warrior right. as well. So, and she's also in uh, Fury Road. So he he's really cool with the actors that he works with. He brings them along with all of his adventures. So. I don't know about the, the Green Lantern costume, but that was sort of redolent of what he looked like in the comics. Yeah, it was going to be the Jon Stewart character, yeah. so that's just a kind of a stand-in right there. But, you know, well, and I like I, I like the Aquaman costume. You know, it's kind of right out of the comics. The guy's a little small. Yeah, it's the but, same guy playing the Green Lantern. It's a, oh, just a stand-in stand for the yeah, outfits. Okay. All the other actors are pretty much like Megan Gale and, and Morton Joe. But and that's Arby all very respectable stuff. looking. Yeah, I think, you know, I mean, seeing this this kind of reveal is like, like makes you oh, looks cool. hate Man, if, the, bat, the Justice League mortal idea way less. So. I mean, if I, if I saw this photo back in, in 2008, I, I just would have, I would have been over the moon about this. Well, if, that's why I, you know, try to bring all you sweaties some exclusives. That's an exclusives here on Heroes and watch it go all around the world starting in about 30 minutes. Every other site's going to be, yeah, yeah, just a thing, man. Plus, well, you, you know, know, there's something about this that people don't understand. When they create these superhero costumes, and if you watch my documentary, Requiem for Krypton, that's on the Superman Returns Blu ray, um, they do photo tests. Yes. You know, they do lighting uh -huh. tests of all these costumes. And so when you see these pictures like this, it's not necessarily how they're gonna look in the film right. when right. they're in motion. Mm -hmm. You know, these are these are just sometimes they're just continuity photos, sometimes they're just taking pictures to see what everyone looks like. And when everybody complains, like when you watch the Shazam costume and think, oh, it's too red. They've already done tests. They know what it's going right. to look like in, in the finished film. Right. So they're they're confident that the outfit's going to look great when you see it on camera. And yet everybody complains and gets. 
they've made these decisions for a reason. Yeah, the, the, the culture we live in is like, uh, we're going to mention another documentary, The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened. You can get that on Blu-ray right now at tdoslwh.com. <laughs> we need to start a documentary. Everybody oh, complained man, we should do one about Nick Cage in that like weird outfit with the hair. And it's like, that was a test photo from a costume that never, that was like just, they're just figuring it out and it got released online. And that's one of those things that you see the later iterations of the outfits got closer and closer to the Superman that we all know. So it's always a fun thing. This is as close as finished as possible because you know there's a lot of, uh, of art that you've seen online with the different costumes, but these were the final test outfits before the whole thing got shut down. Well, guess what? WonderCon is this weekend. If you haven't heard about WonderCon, it's just like San Diego Comic-Con, but just not as big and not as like filled with a million people. So it's actually a lot of fun. It's in Anaheim, and my sweaty ass is going to be there at booth 121. I'm there all weekend. Holly will be there with me. We're going to be signing the Death of Superman Lives What Happened. I'm selling my Slayer comics that I wrote that came out last year. I got a bunch of Metalocalypse stuff, Space Ghost stuff. So if you like any of the stuff that I worked on, I'll have a few limited Black Panther animated things that I because I directed a couple episodes of that. So very few select things that I'm going to bring to sweat out with all of you. And of course, I'm going to go to a ton of panels and have a lot of fun. So check it out. It's WonderCon this coming Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in Anaheim. Once again, I'm at booth 121. So come on by and say hello. Are you guys going to go to WonderCon? Awesome. Yeah, I'm on a panel uh, Saturday at 6.30 p.m. It's called Comics on Comics. Nice. Yeah. Is that with Vito? Yes. Yes. I love, yeah. I love Vito. I, Vito. This is like my He's been on this year. show before. He's great. I got to have him come back as a guest, and I'll try to make that panel. How about you? You're going to be swinging down uh, at yes. WonderCon? Yes. Um, so on Saturday at 2 p.m., uh, I have a panel of women in pop culture with a lot of the Nerdist and Geek and Sundry ladies. Nice. Um, and then I'm going to be, I believe, at 6 p.m., uh, I'm going to be doing a movie fight. Um, so catch the beginning of that and then go over to Danny's panel. Right on. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, also I think there's, there's a party on Saturday night for uh, subscribers to uh, Legendary Digital's Alpha. Yep. So if, if you are an Alpha subscriber, uh, you can sign up for that. And, and I will I'll be at that there. party as well. Awesome! So that's cool. going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. I'm not a subscriber. I just got an invite. <laughs> Whatever. What's up, son? Where are you going, Robert? Oh, of course I'm going. And, you know, as always with San Diego and with WonderCon, our panel, Starship Smackdown, now in its 17th year. I can't believe it. We started it as a joke in 2002. It keeps going strong. You, you even, they even did a story on NPR about it. Nice. That's at 3.30 on Sunday, and I'm on a panel about movies of 1988. We always do our 30-year our <laughs> retrospective panel. Movies of 1988, that's on Friday. You'll have to look up exactly what time. I think it's in the later afternoon, but awesome. yes, and I'll be floating around, so find me. Yeah, well, I'll come by. I'll announce when I'll, you guys will come by the booth or whatever if you guys want to get some signed stuff. Uh, yeah. We don't have a hero. We've been doing live heroes panels, but this year I was too late at the draw. They were like, we've, you know, no, we will. so no panels, but just come by the booth 121 and sweat it out. Let's get into Twitter questions. Mitchapedia asks, with Brule, uh, t uh, I'm sorry, with Brule talking about the possibility of returning to the MCU, thoughts on Zemo and Ross creating the Thunderbolts and strolling in uh, to the Avengers 4 to save the day a la Osborne and Secret Invasion. So there's a lot of sweat right here. He's uh, talking about Baron Zemo from Civil War, uh, mm -hmm. which we were talking about on Monday. I was like, I want to see him come back with a stupid, you know, dumb mask that he wears. It's like a weird, <laughs> like it's like literally like a pajama bottom on his face <laughs> or something. But uh, I'd love to see that character, the actor Brule, come back as Zemo. I think that's great. Whether or not they're going to do the Thunderbolts, or not, I think he's a cool villain because he was very, once again, like the beginnings of a Killmonger mm -hmm. where it's like, it's not your typical villain who's like, I will destroy. It's like more he had a vengeance, just like Killmonger. And it was done in a very different exacting way. What are your thoughts about Zemo showing up in Avengers 4? Oh, uh, so he was fantastic. And uh, again, yeah, there, there are points where you're like, He's not wrong. Tony Stark is kind of a monster. Uh, but uh, if, if with Thunderbolts, I think it would be too many characters to introduce. Mm -hmm. um, just because, as I said, they've done an incredible job of uh, slowly pacing out uh, introductions of villains and heroes. Um, so it's a little too much. But I, I think that he could come back conceivably at, at some point. I, I don't know. Uh, about like coming up very soon. I think, think he absolutely has to come back because or else why did they mention him? You know, why did they keep showing him? Uh, and also why didn't they kill him off? So um, I think he'll, I think we might be seeing him, but I don't know. I agree about Thunderbolts that I don't think that, I think it's too much. I think there's too much going on. Right. Um, but I do know that he's gonna continue to be a figure in these films. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't think, I mean, just like Suicide Squad, you know, if they waited a little bit longer to introduce Suicide Squad, yeah. it would have had more resonance because you'd be like, oh, we've got, we've already introduced all these villains in every, all the standalone superhero films that never happened. So it's like that whole thing, you know, that's a different universe. This universe was done right. So even mm -hmm. if they did do the Thunderbolts, you'd already have this entire, you know, world that's been built around them. What do you think, Robert? Well, I love Daniel Bruhl as an actor. He's currently in theaters now in Seven Days at Entebbe or Seven Days in Entebbe which I've always, as a kid, I loved the Israeli raid on Entebbe when they rescued all their hostages. Mm -hmm. the, the movie's not as good as it should be, but he's great in it. So bring on Zemo. Again, the Thunderbolts, again, it's just too much. Like, remember kids, we have to think about how you're gonna introduce all of these characters in a movie and make you believe it. Right. And it's one of the great strengths of the Marvel Universe is they've done a fantastic job uh, introducing both heroes and villains. I mean, if you go back, I just watched Iron Man 1 again, because I'm preparing for Infinity War. I forgot how sort of set in the real world Iron mm -hmm. Man 1 totally. really was. Yeah. I mean, more so than, I, don't, I didn't remember that because by the time you get to Iron Man 2, it's, there's a lot more fantasy stuff going on, the, the, the Mark V suit, uh, and it's just, but Iron Man 1 was really set in the real world, and I think they do a great job of doing that. And, and introducing the Thunderbolts is not the MCU style, right. really. You gotta, you gotta make it real. You gotta make people believe. Here's a way to make it real. You know that weird tank, weird thing in the middle of the ocean that, that Ross has got all the, you know, super right. villains, like the abomination is there. Probably Zemo's there too, and they create their own little super gang by hanging out in prison together. So that's how you could naturally make the Thunderbolts and, you know, well, we gotta call ourselves something. Why don't we call ourselves Thunderbolts? That's stupid. <laughs> they throw it away. So um, let's get into the sweaty question of the week, which is comes from uh, Two Shoes. And it's Kevin Feige recently said that Avengers Infinity War takes place five years after Civil War. What does that mean for Peter Parker? Is he a senior now or has he even graduated high school at this point? Well, I'm not 100% sure that Kevin Feige said exactly five years. He did say that like natural time elapses between the movies mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. there's always a period of time that's elapsed. He didn't exactly say it's exactly one month and four or like a year and three days. He didn't, I don't, I don't recall him stating of exact time, but he did say like Avengers Infinity War will pick up later than it doesn't just pick up right after Civil War. You know, it doesn't end, Civil War doesn't end and then literally the next day it's Avengers Infinity War. Some time has elapsed, but obviously Peter Parker is still in high school as we see in a high school bus yeah. that he's on. So hey, college kids take bus trips too. You're right, but <laughs> so. I don't think, I don't, I really don't think that they've advanced it like two years right. or even a year. I'm, I, my guess, six months, if even. I'm, so what are your thoughts? Oh, uh, well, yeah, I think the bus is the big tell, mm -hmm. is that we know he's still in high school. And, right. and also, they took great care to film all of them so close together. That's and then, true. And then we all kind of, fi uh, we were figuring out, like, uh, Black Panther takes place, like, pretty much just after right. Civil right. War. And then it seems like, just from things that we saw in the trailer, including Spider-Man's age, like, that's probably right after Black Panther. Right. Um, I don't think it's more than two years. Well, I think they, they really plan it out. Like Thor and Hulk, that time when they're on, you know, like doing their Thor right. Ragnarok I think that's thing. During. That's, during that's during Civil War. So, yeah, so that's yeah, happening that at the same too. time. You have Spider Man Homecoming 2, or whatever they're going to call the second one, is supposed to take place right after Avengers 4. And they've said this is going to kick off phase four. So they've already kind of said that the events that happen in Avengers 4 will directly affect Spider Man 2, which comes out afterwards. Ant-Man and the Wasp, which comes out after Infinity War, is gonna directly correlate to things that happen. So whether they're on the run from Civil War or there's additional stuff that we don't know. So it's it's kind of nice to know where they fit in, but it's definitely not like years of elapse. What do you Yeah, think? I guess maybe it's not five years. I was gonna say maybe he's missed a lot of school and and was <laughs> was held back. <laughs> but also like I wouldn't mind seeing I hope I wouldn't mind seeing a slightly older Peter Parker who's a senior or going into college. Tom Hol Holland himself is turning 22 this year. So I think it would be neat to kind of have that. Yeah. Um, he's also gonna be an aging actor. Right. So I do know that they're eventually, even though he looks like a baby, gonna eventually have to keep that in mind. I don't mind them doing like a Harry Potter scenario with this kid. But um, yeah, I, I would agree it's probably about two years, but I wouldn't mind having a, having a, a college age Peter Parker. Yeah, either. they just gotta move on this 
So every three years, Spider-Man yeah. thing's not working. You know, he's got a high school. It's like freshman. You know, it's like how many years is going to be in high school? Well, well, Feige said three movies, three high school years. What do you think? Well, you know, again, these Entertainment Weekly interviews, which were illuminating. If you watch the long versions of them, Scarlett Johansson was interviewed, and she said it takes place a couple of years after uh, the last Spider-Man movie mm -hmm. or after Civil War. And that's why that they've been a peacekeeping force. That's why Cap has his star gone and he's spray painted his red, white, and blue gray. That they've been doing peacekeeping work throughout the world and it's been a couple of years, which would probably put Peter, we don't know, was he a sophomore in Homecoming? I think he, I think he or was. Or a freshman. I want to say he was, he, I can't remember. So he'd be a senior. Yeah, he has to be a senior. He's senior he in Infinity yeah. War, yeah, and then the, yeah, the follow-up, he'd still be a senior, so he could make a movie, and then maybe at the end of that movie, it's, it's, it's graduation. Well, maybe Spider-Man graduation day or <laughs> yeah, something. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. I mean, maybe it begins not? with him graduating. We're like, hey, let's get out of, you know, have Homecoming a couple of those prom, people. Graduation. Because yeah. I want to see that movie where Spider-Man goes to college, you know, and he checks into his dorm and maybe yeah. rushes a fraternity or whatever. There we go. Well, yeah, he's going to, he has to, Oh. Well, think about it. If yeah. Homecoming two, he's spending funny. a lot of time. To join. He's spending a lot of time in France. So maybe he's in his first year of college at some point. Like he's graduating and he's going overseas. Bam. Euro trip. Oh, babe, I just oh got it. God. You know, just figuring stuff out. Or I'm totally wrong. So it's okay to be wrong. Spider Man spring yeah. break. You can take a year off. Spider Man spring break. <laughs> yeah, Spider Man spring break. Prom right. spring break. Spring break. <laughs> Hey, you've been watching Heroes. We're out of time. I want to thank the guests, Robert, Danny, Erica. Thanks for being on, sweating it out. Thank We've you. had a lot of fun, and uh, I'll see you next week. What's up, sweaties? John Schnepp here. Thanks for watching this episode of Collider Heroes. You want to watch more Collider episodes of Heroes, comic book shopping, and click on any of these links right here to get more of that content. You can subscribe right now and share Collider Heroes, share comic book shopping with your friends. Thanks for watching.